Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on introduction to teams under the subject team management. Teamwork is the secret that make common people achieve uncommon results. So that is why teamwork is important. That teamwork is the secret that make common or ordinary people achieve results which can which cannot be achieved commonly so they will be achieving very uncommon very special results as they work in a team how can they do that let's discuss in this lecture So today we are going to discuss about teams. So after the completion of the module introduction by Ms. Dineti Asodara, today is the first theory lesson that we are going to learn. It is on introduction to teams. I am Prabhashini Vijayvanta, senior lecturer attached to the Department of Human Resource Management Faculty of Commerce and Management Studies, University of Kalaniya. In this session, I am going to give you a brief overview of teams. So this is what we are going to discuss under the today's lecture. What is a team? First, we are going to know what is a team. The definition of a team. This would be very easy for you because you have studied about teams before. Where? In your first year, I hope you could remember that you studied a subject called Principles of Management. To be precise, it was in the first year, first semester. I hope teamwork or managing teams was one single topic there. So you have a brief overview knowledge or an overview understanding about teams. In this subject, we are going to discuss in depth about teams. So first we will start that process by looking at what is a team. So we will look at various definitions about teams and see what are the key characteristics that we can use to identify a team. And then another word that we also talk along with teams is groups. So we will next look at what is a group. Then we should be able to differentiate between teams and groups. Teams versus groups. And there is another concept called mobs. Have you heard about the word mobs? In this lecture, we will discuss what are mobs and then compare teams, groups and mobs. Next, I will present you the model of team effectiveness. So for a team to be effective, there are certain characteristics that are required. We will discuss about those characteristics in the model of team effectiveness. What do you mean by effectiveness by the way? Effectiveness refers to the achieving of expected results. So for a team to be able to achieve its expected results, there are certain characteristics required. Those characteristics have been taken together and presented as a model. That is called the model of team effectiveness. So we will discuss the characteristics in the model of team effectiveness. And finally, before we conclude, we will discuss about some common ideas and misconceptions about teams. 
So the, here we will discuss about some common ideas in the society about teams and also about some misconceptions. What are misconceptions? A misconception is a misunderstanding or a wrong understanding. There are certain wrong understandings about teams. So we will discuss about those things as well. And then if you had been in one of those misconceptions or misunderstandings, you can clear them. So let's begin by looking at the definition of a team. What is a team? As I have asked to you in the quiz, you are required to find the definition of a team. You can refer the internet to find a definition for teams. And also you can refer to several management and organizational behavior textbooks to study or learn about the definition of teams. Here I have used one key definition presented by Katzenbeck and Smith in their book, The Disciplines of Teams. So I will explain this definition. And it's your duty to find several other definitions <coughs> from textbooks. According to these two authors, a team is a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, set of performance goals and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable. So that is the definition of a team. So let me explain this definition. A team is a small number of people. So the basic criteria for a team is there should be more than one person. So there could be a two-member team. A family with the husband and the wife can be identified as a team. Or it could be about say 30 people, 20 people or maybe 40 people like that. But there can't be around 5,000 or 500 members in a team because a team is a small number of people. Though we define a team as more than two people and we, though we do not specify an upper boundary, they emphasize the point small number because otherwise there is, it is not possible to develop a cohesion or a rapport or a bond among the team members. So the maximum number of members in general that could be in a team is 200, not more than that. A team is a small number of people with complementary skills. So when there are people in a team, obviously each of those people have skills. The most important thing here is that we have to create teams with people having complementary skills. What are complementary skills? Have you heard of the word complementary? Yes, you have. You have heard the word complementary in your A-levels. When you studied economics, you studied about complementary goods. Like tea and sugar, coffee and hot water, like that. So complementary skills refers to different skills. And though they are different, they work together. They work hand in hand. They contribute to provide mutual support. Something like this. 
say when you are having a when we have our when we select our cricket team we do not only include batsmen there so there are we can have only 11 members in a cricket team so we do not include 11 batsmen there we include bowlers batsmen uh, and a wicket keeper and maybe a few all rounders why so that the bowlers will do their job and it will be so then say batsmen will do their job by batting and scoring runs and to defend that score we need bowlers so then the bowlers will be able to defend the score created by the batsmen by taking the wickets of the opposing party so that is batting and bowling are two complementary skills the skills are different but complementary or work together or hand in hand and ultimately lead to mutual support that is support supporting each other so when we are creating a team or when we are establishing a team or when we are forming a team in an organization we have to select people not with the same skill but with complementary skills and then we always know teams are not like groups we always establish a team for a particular purpose say in an organization there is a new product development team so that team is there to develop new products for the organization so that is their purpose one of the key features between a, uh, one of the key differences between a team and a group is that a team is created for a particular purpose whereas a group may or may be not so then this purpose should be known by all the members in the team this purpose has to be communicated among all the members within the team that is why you would see when you visit organizations for your company visit assignments they display the corporate vision and the mission at in the front and also sometimes it is displayed in all the departments why so that it is communicated to all the members of that organization so that is the common purpose all the members in the team should be working towards that common purpose all the members should sh demonstrate commitment towards this purpose that is they should demonstrate commitment to the task of the team to achieve the common purpose you will be having performance goals and an approach the common purpose will be at the top to achieve that you set different performance goals so the team has to set or establish different performance goals there could be one or many and then below that there should be an approach so the approach or the strategy will guide you to achieve the performance goals and the achievement of the performance goals will ultimately lead to realize the common purpose so then all the members of the team all the people in the team are work all the members in the team should work together to achieve this common purpose performance goals and the approach because they are responsible for that 
so there is another word called responsibility and accountability what is that you have heard of heard, heard about these two terms again in your first year first semester i'm sure when you are studying principles of management you studied the topic organizing under that you studied about responsibility and accountability are they the same or are they different responsibility is the ultimate responsibility or the uh, vow that is held by a particular person to complete a particular task and when i am responsible to do something and if i have lot of work to do at this moment i can assign somebody under me say one of my co uh, co-workers or subordinates to perform that task then what am i doing i'm transferring my responsibility to my subordinate after that he will be doing that particular work let's say for an example this subject now let's say this subject is team management and this is taught by a team of lecturers myself miss jeevanti and miss yasodara so we are a team we there are there is a small number of people we have only three lecturers so with complementary skills the skills of each of us are different and based on your skill based on our skills we have divided the topics among us whichever the topic we teach we are co committed to a common purpose what is that end of the day we should be able to educate you or provide you with a complete complete overview of the area team management so that is the common purpose of all three of us and then we have a set of performance goals to achieve that common purpose what is that so there are different topics in this subject so we have divided these subjects among us divided these topics among us and each of us has to teach the topic that we have been assigned with under the subject team management so then doing the lectures is our performance goal and we can use different approaches to achieve our performance goal for example i can do a lecture like this in addition i have used a quiz also for this lesson in the next lesson maybe miss jeevanti will use a case study in the next lesson miss yasodara will use let's say a video so that is the approach so if three of us use three different approaches and say i have to teach the next topic stages of team development let's assume but i am unable to do that say let's say i have some work on that day and i am unable to attend the do, come and do the lecture at the university so this delivering of this lecture is my responsibility but since i am unable to come and do the lecture i assign that responsibility to miss jeevanti so then after i transferred my responsibility to do the lecture thereafter the responsibility of doing the lecture on stages of team development is held by miss jeevanti but let's assume suddenly on that day she is also unable to come and do the lecture okay so am i responsible is there anything that i have to do at that time yes or no 
Yes. Why? Because that topic was initially assigned or allocated to me, I am ultimately responsible for that lecture. So that responsibility which I could not transfer to Miss Jeevanti is called the accountability. In Sinhala, we call these two terms Vagakema and Vagavema. So, Vagakema is responsibility and Vagavema is accountability. The most important and the most interesting thing in a team is that this accountability is not to the top management. There is a responsibility of the team towards the top management, but mainly it is towards the other members of the team. That is why we call it mutually accountable. <clears throat> Say in a cricket match, the batsman at the bowler's end is accountable to the batsman at the keeper's end. He is ultimately responsible for the victory of the team. This accountability cannot be transferred to anybody. So this, I hope this explanation or description will be able to give a complete understanding to you about what is a team. Next, we look at the other term that goes hand in hand with themes. What is that? It is about groups. So what is a group? According to the same authors, that is Katzen, Weck and Smith, a group is different from a team, as I mentioned before. So a group in itself does not constitute a team. A group in itself does not constitute a team. Let's say something like this. Tomorrow I want to go to Malaysia. So I go to the airport and there are other members who are going in the same flight with me to Malaysia. So we all are one group who are flying in the UL 418 flight from Sri Lanka to Malaysia. So all the passengers in that flight are a group or a team. It is a group. There is no particular team there. A group in itself does not constitute a team. If you consider a workplace, there are work groups. A work group is a collection of people working in the same area or placed together to complete a task. Let's assume there is a, in our company, there are thousand sewing girls divided into small teams. So with the Irrespective of those small, small teams, if you take this group of 1000 members, it is a work group. In the organization, let's say we are an apparel manufacturing company. So we have 1000 uh, girls in our factory floor. So that is a work group. So there is a collection of thousand people working in the same area, so let's say in the same physical location, in the same factory or placed together to complete a task. But some of the girls will be cutting clothes and some of the girls will be taking the measurements and the other team would be sewing the hand. The other team would be sewing the handcuffs. The other team would be sewing the buttons. So then ultimately they would complete the task of 
finishing a shirt or a stock of shirts then this is a work group within this work group there are teams the team of fixing buttons the team of cutting clothes the team of fixing this cuff cuffs for the sleeves like that the focus of groups is individual performance one major difference between the teams and the groups is that the focus of a group is about the performance of each individual member not the overall team but in a team they work to a, while holding a mutual accountability so by listening to this explanation about a group you will be able to also understand the difference between teams and groups In addition we will also compare teams and groups in detail later So as shown in this diagram team members act as a cohesive unit whereas group members act as individuals Within a group the members act or behave or work as separate individuals but in a team the members act as one single unit the most important feature in a team is the concept of cohesion cohesive a team should be cohesive what do you mean by cohesive cohesive means there is a strong relationship or a bond among the members of the team so let's discuss further about these after looking at what are mobs what is a mob have you heard the word mob i'm sure some of you may have heard the word mob whereas for some of you it could be a new concept but once i explain this and also once you go through the slide you will understand that it is not new at all so what is a mob a collection of two or more people who interact with one another but unlike a group have a united negative purpose so the key here is that they have a negative purpose so this is the main feature that differentiates a mob from a team and a group similarly like in a team or a group there is people it is a collection of two or more people like in a team or a group who interact with one another who work together with one another so this interaction could be like in a group rather than as a team why in a team as i mentioned before there is cohesion but in a mob you don't see cohesion but the key difference is that unlike in a group they have a negative purpose one common feature of teams groups and mobs is that they have all three of them have a purpose ultimate purpose and they are united towards achieving that purpose in a team we achieve that purpose together in a group we achieve that purpose individually each and each and every one of us will individually achieve the purpose which will ultimately lead to achieve the purpose of the group have a united negative purpose 
so then the key thing in a mob is that the members are united towards achieving a negative purpose so the best examples could be a protest or some group working to sabotage something we call them in singhala khada kappal kare kriya karaka the activities of a mob are aimed at changing challenging or sabotaging the traditional order of things within an organization since you are studying for a business management degree we discuss everything from the perspective of organizations but same things apply also to countries families or any other unit so then the activities of a mob in an organization or maybe in a country are aimed at challenging changing or sabotaging the traditional order of things within an organization there is a traditional way of how things happen in an organization or in a country so there are certain people who do not like that way things happen so the way things normally happen is called the traditional order another term for this could be status quo so there are some people who do not like the status quo or the system or the traditional order then they want it to be changed but if the authorities let's say the management in a company or leaders in a country does not like to change then this mob will work together to change the traditional order of things how by challenging the management or challenging the leaders or by sabotaging certain things now did you see the the during this covid-19 outbreak in europe where there were a lot of cases you would have seen that there was a huge protest of people in paris so that was a mob they were sabotaging the traditional order of things sometimes not always i emphasize again not always but sometimes certain trade unions in organizations also act like mobs which is very difficult and as a future hr managers you should be able to very carefully handle those incidents these mobs when they challenge the status quo or when they want the status quo to be changed or when they do something sabotaging people may try to criticize them in that instance they rationalize their disruptive and vicious methods by creating the belief that their actions are the solution to mob members problems so when the management of the company or the leaders of a country are challenging the activities of the mob they rationalize or they justify what do you mean by justify sadharani karane karana they are disruptive and vicious methods they are disruptive methods of action like let's say sometimes there would be sabotage in a during a trade union action like breaking very expensive machines in a factory plant so those are disruptive and vicious sections done during a trade union action which we identify as 
sabotage. So these disruptive and vicious methods are rationalized by creating the belief. They artificially create the belief that they are actions. Whose actions? The actions of the mob are the solution that is the only solution to prob the problems of the mob members. Which means they believe that all the democratic methods of solving problems have been not successful. And thereafter, they go for these disruptive and vicious methods. In doing so, they create, rationalize their actions to the society, to the other employees and the management by creating the belief that their actions are the solution to the problems of mob members. This is how they, the leaders of certain trade unions, for an example, convince their employees to get into trade union action. The leaders of the trade union rationalize their, let's say, a strike or a work to rule action by creating the belief among the members of the union that this is the only solution to the salary problem of the mob members, the, the salary problem of the trade union members. So in that case, as the employees would also get convinced that this will solve their salary problems, definitely they will engage in the trade union action. So that is about a mob. So then the possible questions from this area would be to like define what is a team and explain your definition. So that is very important because as you would see, I have mentioned the definition of a team and I have taken a lot of time to explain the definition of a team. So sometimes you may be asked at the exam to define what is a team and explain it. And the next thing would be to define what is a group. <clears throat> and thereafter, you may be required to identify the common features between teams, groups and mobs and differences between teams, groups and mobs. And also, you may be able to explain what is a mob using suitable or appropriate examples. <clears throat> so, to help you further in answering the questions at the exam, let me further elaborate the differences between the teams and group. Let's look at these differences one by one. The first is teams. In a team, members work interdependently and work towards both personal and team goals. Whereas in a group, members work independently and often are not working towards the same goal. So, as I mentioned before, a team and a group both have a purpose. So, to achieve that purpose, you have different performance goals. But members within a team would be working towards those common team goals. Whereas, in a group, often the members are not working towards the same goal. They work interdependently in a team. So, which means the members in a team are dependent upon each other, which means they are not independent. Whereas, in a group, members work independently. The members are very independent. Swadhinai. 
and also members in the team work interdependently and they work towards achieving two types of goals one is personal goals whereas the other is the overall team goals but in a group you work only towards your personal goals and ultimately the achievement of these personal goals will lead to the achievement of the common purpose but it does not happen as a unified effort it happens as a collection of individual efforts in a group next in teams members feel a sense of ownership towards their role in the group because they helped to create their goals whereas in groups members focus mostly on themselves because they are not involved in the planning of their group objectives and goals in a team members feel a sense of belonging towards the team or a sense of ownership towards their role in the team because they themselves were involved in creating the goals of the team which means before plan plan during the planning stage all the members in the team will be actively involved in developing the goals of the team once they work together and actively engage in developing the goals of the team they would implement or work towards achieving those goals members focus mostly on themselves in a group because they are not involved in the planning of their group objectives or and goals as i mentioned before groups also do have objectives and goals but these objectives and goals are created by somebody else let's say the management somebody like that the members of the particular group are not involved in planning or developing the goals assigned to them so therefore they do not have an ownership towards these objectives or goals instead they focus mostly on themselves that is on achieving the individual performance goals or objectives the next difference between teams and groups is that members in a team collaborate and use their talent and experience to meet the goals of the team so the members of the team will be jointly using their talent and experience if you take a cricket team you would be able to very easily notice this in a cricket team you would see there would be certain instances where one team is chasing a score but some of their wickets have also gone so <clears throat> they have to score runs fast and at the same time they have to protect their wickets also in that case some batsman one batsman who will be uh, like more capable of taking runs fast will score the runs in the big score the runs while the other person will be on the other end protecting the wicket so like that members can collaborate or work together and use their talent and experience to meet the goals of the team and then in a group it's a different scenario members are given different tasks or told what their duty is or what their responsibility is 
this deciding of tasks are done by the group leader or the top management and then the tasks are assigned to the members of the group and they cannot make any changes or any suggestions they are rarely welcomed or rather they are not accepted instead the members have to simply execute the given tasks or execute the duty assigned in teams members base their success on trust and encourage all the members in the team to express their opinions varying views and questions often this happens during team meetings all the members have a very high level of trust among the members of the team that is what we call mutual trust members base or place their success on the mutual trust in the team and encourage all the members in the team to express their opinions views and ideas during a team meeting the members may express varying views these ideas not could not be will not be the same there would be huge differences and then also the others would be questioning those ideas all these things are possible within a team because there is a high level of trust but in a group members are very cautious or very careful about what they say they are very scared to open their mouths they will think thousand times before they open their mouths and also sometimes even though they have doubts they are afraid to ask questions members make conscious effort to be honest and respectful and listen to the other members points of view in a team so then the members make a very conscious and a very careful effort to be honest to the others and have lot of respect that is what we call the mutual respect and also to listen to the point of view of the other members so in in listening to the points of view of the other members they would very actively listen to the point of view of the other members i'm sure you have studied about listening in the managerial communication subject in the second year there you have studied about active listening and passive listening active listening is very important in a team one of the major mistakes that our people make is that they often listen not to understand but to respond so while the other person is talking the listener is not listening the listener at the back of the mind is developing the response to what the other person is saying <clears throat> as a result what happens they miss certain points mentioned by the speaker but in teams it's not like that they are you the members engage in active listening members do not trust each other's motives in a group because they do not fully understand the role played by played by each member in the group so since there is no mutual trust the people do not know about the motives or hidden agendas of the other members so they are very careful in a team members are always encouraged or motivated to offer or utilize their skills and knowledge to contribute to the success of the team the success of the team depends on the contributions of all its members and all its members that is the human resource of the team will be contributing to the team by using the skills and their knowledge so often it is important to select teams 
with members having complementary skills and knowledge. Unfortunately, in groups, members may have a lot to contribute in terms of ideas, but their ideas are held back or they are reluctant to express their ideas or contribute with their skills and knowledge because they have a closed relationship with the other members. The members are not open to each other. They have a very closed relationship with each member. Next, as you, we all know, there are problems within teams and also groups. We all know that there are problems everywhere. So there is no difference in teams. There are problems within teams. Everybody in the team, that is all the members in the team, want to resolve the problems or solve the problems. They just don't want to keep, continue with the problems. There are some situations where people in an organization or a team may be happy when they have problems. But it is not like that in a team. They always want the problems to be solved and to be solve them in a very constructive manner. They see it as human nature to have differing views. So when we are going to have solve problems, we have to do it in a very constructive and careful manner. Because otherwise we would be hurting the feelings of others. It is the human nature or na the natural way of human beings to have different views or opinions about a particular problem. But then again we have to collect all their views, opinions and ideas and ultimately solve the problem in a very constructive manner. But in a group, solving problems is not that easy because members are bothered by differing opinions or disagreements because they consider it a threat. Obviously, when there is two or more people, there are different opinions and views. But we have to consider it as a resource, the diversity or differences in opinions as a resource. In a group, it is not a resource, it is a threat. So people are bothered or scared or worried by the diverse or different opinions among the members because they ultimately lead to strong disagreements. Members in a team participate equally in decision making, but sometimes the leader must make a final decision. So as I mentioned earlier, everything in a team happens together, usually in a team meeting. So then all the members in the team actively participate and equally participate in making decisions related to the team. You will learn about these things in detail under the topic team decision making, which will be covered by Ms. Jeevanti later. So then when, the peop when all the members of the team participate equally in decision making, you would see sometimes there would be diverse views, opinions and ideas and it would be practically difficult to arrive at a consensus or an agreement. In that case, the leader may have to make the final decision and all the members of the team will agree or abide by that final decision made by the leader. In groups, some in some groups, members may participate in group decision making. 
but in some groups members may not participate in group decision making in that case the decisions will be made by the top management or the leader of the group and it will be only communicated to the group and then the group has to work or follow or abide by that decision conformity is valued more than positive results so the members of a group cannot challenge or question the decisions made they have to simply confirm to or follow those decisions so this focus on conformity sometimes may lead not to achieve the best decision or the best outcome still we sacrifice the achieving of positive results for the conformity so these are the differences between teams and groups so you may be able to explain these differences using suitable examples at the exam so now i have in detail discussed about the differences between teams and groups so i'm sure you all are very clear about the differences between teams and groups and when you are asked to write the differences at the exam you should be able to write these differences explain them and also further elaborate them using appropriate examples like taking a cricket team your assignment groups or anything and also the next task is for you all to differentiate not only between teams and groups but also between teams groups and mobs so those are the things that you should practice or focus on when you are studying so then let me move on to the model of team effectiveness so this is a model which explains or indicates the important characteristics required to be in a team for it to be effective so what is an effective team first of all an effective team is a team that is able to achieve the purpose that it has been created to achieve so these are the characteristics of an effective team clear goals relevant skills mutual trust unified commitment good communication negotiating skills appropriate leadership internal support and external support so we will discuss about each of these 12 characteristics in detail next characteristics of effective teams as mentioned in the model effective teams are unified in their commitment to team goals so as i mentioned at the outset all the teams have a common purpose and they have different performance goals targeted towards achieving those achieving the common purpose so then in an effective team all the members are unified or jointly committed towards achieving the goals of the team say for an example all the members of the sri lankan cricket team are committed towards lifting the t20 world cup in 2025 let's say effective teams have good communication systems as you may have studied communication is a very important skill for anybody that is why you have a separate optional subject called managerial communication in the second year 
so in a team also communication is very important i will discuss as i mentioned before about team communication in detail in a separate lecture so all the effective teams have a very good established communication system among the members of the team so that the all the messages coming from the top are properly communicated to all the members of the team and also at the same time all the ideas suggestions wives everything coming from the members of the team are communicated to the top management or the leadership that is there is good vertical top to bottom and bottom to top communication and also at the same time there is a strong cohesion among the team members which means there is very good horizontal communication possess effective negotiating skills one of the key components of communication is negotiation while working in a team there would be situations where the team as a whole or as between among members they would have to negotiate or sometimes bargain then the members of the team should possess or have effective negotiating skills why otherwise they would not be able to successfully negotiate sometimes if you don't successfully negotiate it would end up as a conflict next the most important thing in a team and if in an effective team is having appropriate leadership all the teams should have an appropriate leader so we will talk about team leadership in detail in a separate lecture and then teams should have both internally and externally supportive environments so a team operates within an organization so then it operates within the organizational environment so there should be sufficient support coming from the members of the team the support coming from the members or within the team is called internal support whereas external support refers to the support coming from the other units of the organization let's say for an example there is a recreation club in an organization so if the finance department provides the sufficient funds without any hesitation for this recreation club that means they are having sufficient external support then it is not only important to have goals but also it is very important in an effective team to have a clear understanding of their goals all the members of the team should have a very clear understanding of the goals at the beginning of the task so this can actually be done through proper communication have competent members with relevant technical and interpersonal skills in an effective team there should there are people or members that is the human resource of the team so these members should be competent that is they should have sufficient knowledge skills attitudes mindfulness and also experience so they should have the those competencies in a complementary manner as mentioned during the first first explanation about 
the definition of teams so then the members will have uh, to be competent the members need to have two main types of skills two relevant types of skills one technical skills two interpersonal skills what are technical skills the skills in the subject discipline or area for an example the members of the hr team of an organization should have the knowledge and skills related to hr whereas in an let's say in a sales team the members should have the sufficient knowledge and skills about handling sales and not only the technical skills they also need interpersonal skills what are interpersonal skills skills between for working with other people that is called interpersonal skills or human skills these skills will be very important in developing or building the cohesion among the team members and finally an effective team should exhibit or demonstrate high mutual trust in the character and integrity of their members the members of an effective team should exhibit one mutual trust i mentioned to you earlier about the importance of trust and that there is mutual trust a very high level of mutual trust within the members of the team and also people should be honest that is they should have a very positive character and they should be they should have honesty and integrity as i explained previously next let me move on to common misconceptions about teams what are misconceptions as i mentioned to you before misconceptions are misunderstandings so let's see what are the misunderstandings in the society about teams so some people believe that teams don't need leadership this is wrong leadership and team work go hand in hand all the effective and successful teams have a good leadership so therefore teams need leadership teams must have a say in all decisions it is wrong that all the members should have a say in all the decisions it is practically impossible though we take the wives ideas and opinions of all the members in the team during team decision making there may be situations where we cannot entertain all the wives and ideas in that case the leader may have to take the decision some groups cannot be teams if all the groups develop the characteristics of effective teams they can easily become teams so any group can be converted into a team talking team work will make it happen we are very good at talking talking team work will not make things happen we have to put words into action so we have to walk the talk we can't just sit and talk about team work we have to make it happen managing teams is more difficult than traditional management i think traditional management is more difficult than managing a team managing a team is more easy than handling traditional management but the most important thing is the manager or the leader needs to know 
how to manage a team effectively. So next, let me move on to the concluding remark. Before we conclude, I want to share this idea with you. There is no perfect group or team in this world. There is no perfect group or team. Even every leader will make mistakes. Even your leader will make mistakes. And you have to accept that. You can't tell that your team is perfect because your leader will also be making mistakes. Or because your leader is making mistakes all the time, your, you cannot say that your team is imperfect. No one will agree with everyone. Obvious. We all will have our own reservations and disagreements. So it is not possible to get the agreement of all the members of the team for any decision. Failure happens. Whenever we try to work as a team, there will be a lot of failures. It's common and obvious. Failure happens. We have to accept that and start again from the scratch and achieve success. It only takes one successful idea to turn things around. If your team is failing continuously, then it only needs one successful idea to turn things around and drive the team towards victory. So everybody should work towards achieving that successful idea. Before we wind up, I would like to propose this reflective exercise for you. So once you listen to this lecture recording, you can sit and reflect on, reflect about yourself. So that is why I called this a reflective exercise. You can reflect about yourself. Either you can think or you can take a sheet of paper and write your answers. Then you will be able to judge whether you are a team player or not. If you are working in a team, you have to be a good team player. Otherwise, you will also be in trouble and also your team will also be in trouble. So think about these questions. Would you rather work alone as an individual or with a group? Do people like working with you or not? Are you flexible in adjusting to new situations or new work demands? Are you willing to help out another team member if they are struggling? This is called altruism or altruistic behavior. So with that, I conclude the first lecture on teams or team management. The topic that we covered is introduction to teams. So it is very important for you to understand the importance for teams in organizations. In teams, together, everyone will achieve more. So thank you very much for listening to this lecture and I hope you have gained a lot of insight out of this and so you may attempt the quiz before the, listening to this audio and also you may check your answers again after listening to this video lecture. Thank you very much once again.